44 AD, that is in the year of our Lord, in our period. Now, what was this cleansing of the sanctuary all about? What did God want us to know? Because Daniel, the vision was not for Daniel. Remember the angel says, shut thou up the vision for it shall be for many days. So the vision was not for Daniel, it was for us in these last days. So what did God want us to know that would happen in 1844 in response to what the little horn was doing? Remember the question was, how long shall the, the, the desolation of the sanctuary continue? which was being accomplished by the little horn. What was the little horn doing we studied last night? He was bringing a counterfeit gospel and feeding it to the people and saying, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Accept it or be persecuted. Accept it or be burned as a heretic. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. You must go through Mary as the mediator. You must accept this church as the only church and this man as the head of all churches or you'll be born as a heretic. This was being presented as the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the question came about, well, how long will this continue? And the answer came back on to 2,300 years. And also at that time, the angel said the sanctuary will be cleansed. So two things were to, be, were to happen in this year, 1844. Sanctuary cleansed and something else pertaining to the little horn. Now let's talk about the sanctuary. The terms in the Bible, sanctuary, tabernacle, uh, temple, house of the Lord, are used interchangeably. Sometimes it refers to the entire en enclosed compound, with the structures of the temple therein. Sometimes it refers to the courtyard of the temple. Sometimes it refers to the structure, the building of the temple, depending on the context. So our question should be, was there a sanctuary or a temple in Jerusalem in 1844? The answer is no, because as we said, saw last night, the temple was destroyed in 70 AD by the, by the Romans and it has never been rebuilt to this day for one reason and one reason only. This is a photograph of the Temple Mount, the area here where the Jerusalem Temple was. And notice this building here. This is a Muslim mosque. And that's the reason why the temple cannot be rebuilt. Let's read, the Temple Mount is the holiest site in Judaism. The Torah records that it was here that God chose to rest his divine presence and consequently two Jewish temples were built at the site. That is one after the other. The first one was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar, the second one rebuilt. Jews believe that the third temple, which they hope to be the final one, will also be located here. Now in Islam, the same site is revered as the location of Islamic prophet Muhammad's journey to Jerusalem and ascent into heaven. The site is the lo location of the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock, which is the oldest Islamic structure in the world. Both Israel, Israel and the Palestinian Authority claim sovereignty over the site, which remains a key issue in the Arab-Israeli conflict. So that is why you hear of all these terrorist bombings and all of these attacks on Gaza and all of these people, they are fighting because of this area. And so until today, the, Jew, the Jews cannot, and I don't believe they ever will, be able to build a temple on that spot. Here's a close-up of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Just to give you the, 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 an idea of its size, these are human beings here, and that's the height of that really beautiful building. It is covered with all sorts of um, beautiful decorations, and that is gold-plated, a, a gold-plated dome, very expensively constructed building. So now, in 1844, there was no temple in Jerusalem, so 
if a temple was going to be cleansed in 1844, it could not be the temple on earth. It had to be the temple in, in heaven. Now, does the temple in heaven need cleansing? The Bible says, yes. Look at this, Hebrews 9, 19 to 23. And almost all things are by the law purged, which means cleansed, are cleansed with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, with blood. But the heavenly things themselves need to be purified with better sacrifices. So it is saying that the earthly temple had to be purified or cleansed with the blood of animals. But the heavenly temple needs to be purified with better sacrifice. And what was the better sacrifice? The Bible says, Hebrews 9, 12 and 26, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, Jesus' own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. But now once in the end of the world has he appeared to put away sin for, by the sacrifice of himself. So we see the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary is the putting away of sin. Now, how did sin get into the heavenly sanctuary? Well, the answer, we have to look at the pattern of the heavenly sanctuary, which was the earthly sanctuary. When we observe how things were done in the earthly sanctuary, we will get an idea of what was happening or what is happening in the heavenly sanctuary. Now, this is a drawing or, or a painting of how the earthly sanctuary looked in the time of Moses. And we see here it was like a tent, a cloth tent structure surrounded by a, a fence which made the courtyard. And in there we had the altar of, the, of burnt offering and the laver and so on. This was made to be portable so it could be taken down and carried as the Jews, as the Israelites moved throughout the wilderness following the pillar of cloud. Now afterwards when the, when, the, when the Israelites came into the land of promise and established their kingdom, they built, Solomon built this great temple which probably looked something like this. This is how the temple would have looked in the time of Jesus. And notice we went from a little tent now to a massive structure. But basically, all of these temples, the tabernacle in the wilderness and these types of temples had similar features. And these features basically were a courtyard, this area here which was um, walled off. And in the courtyard, we had the altar of burnt offering where the sacrifices were made. We had the laver, which was full of clean water that the priest had to wash his hands and feet before he went into the structure now. And in the structure was divided into two compartments. You had the holy place, and in the holy place, you had a seven-branch candlestick. You had a table of which you had the showbread. You had the altar of incense, which incense was continually burnt and um, serve a dual purpose of getting rid of the scent of the blood and uh, in the, the next compartment there was a veil or thick curtain that separated the two and in this next compartment was called the most holy place and in there you had one thing and that was the ark of the covenant which contained the ten commandments now the priests ministered daily in this area and this area. The priest, when you brought your sacrifice, your animal, you confessed your sin, the priest slew the animal, put some his, poured out his blood here, and took some of, his, some of the blood in here and sprinkled it before the, the veil, right? And the incense took care of the smell of the blood. However, as we see in this example here, for example, if the, if, the, if the entire congregation, the entire nation of Israel sinned, the leaders of the, of, that, of, the, of, the, of the congregation or the nation, which are called the elders, it says here, 
the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands upon the head of the bullock 